Welcome to another episode of the Kumble Corner. I am Super Joshi, joined today by our retention in this auction, Knuckle Bande, and our new signing, writer Kartik Krishnaswamy. Welcome, Kartik. Hey, <laughs> good, hey, good, good. good to be here. Ah. Uh, yeah, if you guys had consulted me earlier, I would have said like Kumble Corner, you should be Kumble Circle because there's an Anil Kumble Circle what? in Bangalore. And you'd be kind of ripping yeah, off yes, that. Yes, but we're also fans of alliteration. It was, it was a tough one. We went we ran around, around right. the houses a bit. Uh, yeah, you can't go Kumble Kirkle, no, I guess. That, that sounds, yeah. really makes sense. That, that, sounds, no. <laughs> that sounds funny, I have yeah. to say. Although Bangalore has its own favourite um, <laughs> son now with a K, Virat Kohli. Um, but less said about the, the Kumble Kohli equation, the better, I think. Um, so, by the way, if you are new to this podcast, welcome. If you've been listening for a while or watching for a while, hit subscribe below if you're on YouTube or hit follow wherever you are, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and go on your socials, Instagram, Vagera Vagera. Kumble Corner is what you search. Two Ks, obviously, um, as... We've also found a guest with the same, well, not a guest, um, our uh, team member, shall I say, a new team member who's also got two Ks. So, KK, should we should we start with you um, and your views of what has been quite a momentous month and series? Um, a lot of people thought it was going to be three nil, and it was three nil, depending on which way you look at it. Nil three, Australia like um, kind of way of of saying scores or, or or the rest of the world, however you look at it. And the upshot is that India have saved Test cricket, haven't they? They, I mean, they'd have done that even if they'd won <laughs> three nil, and or, yeah, or drawn all three games. India are always saving. Do you, I mean, just just, just by playing, by okay. Playing, so you don't think yeah. like Test cricket is dying, and, and maybe we should just yeah. focus on IPL um, and and other twenty twenty things. That's a whole different conversation. But uh, yeah, I mean, as long as India are playing test cricket is alive and well and thriving. And of course, if you're not in the World yeah. Test Championship right. final, then you can't lose it again. So that's also a bit of big brain thinking, 40 chess going on there. Um, shall, we, shall we delve into roughly what happened? So the first series, first match, obviously, Rachan Ravindra's home ground. Um, yeah, that was that was quite... Easy enough for Bangalore, uh, for Bangalore. Also, yes, Rachin for also for for, for New Zealand. Um, second test in Pune, um, also at altitude. So basically, the first two games were effectively in South Africa when it comes from India's point of view. Um, and the third one in Ajaz Patel's home ground, uh, where he was actually born, um, pretty much in Mumbai. So he won. Um, Knuckle, Karthik, do we do we just say that this series didn't really happen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there'll be plenty of people uh what's that it's the adam sandler movie click where he gets a remote where he can turn back where he can turn back time or for fans of 90s kids tv bernard's watch in the uk i think uh, gotham like gambeard, men in black you know the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. gotham gumbeard is uh, is holding up the neuralizer to everybody and trying to pretend that this doesn't happen because his first I don't want to say major series because that, that's very disrespectful to Bangladesh, but his first more than two test series, and he's the guy holding the can when India's uh, unbeaten run eventually ends, uh, obviously because he was a player last time that India got beaten uh, at home in, in a test series. Uh, and it it is not a good look, put it that way. Uh, to continue the film references, as Robin Williams shouts in Good Morning Vietnam, uh, when uh, it is revealed that his friend is a member of the Viet Cong, this will not look good on a resume. Uh, and yeah. the the worry is that India, so India lost the first test basically in one session on a seeming pitch, and actually did incredibly well to make a game of it. They then decided to press the button that they pressed repeatedly through. Uh, through home series recently where they lose a test and then they start producing a very, very spin-friendly wicket which takes their own fast bowlers out of the equation and makes things harder uh, for their batters. They've got away with it in previous series. They didn't uh, this time. And it's kind of been coming. Uh, I, I've said before, I don't really understand why going to very spin-friendly wickets is supposedly helpful. 
for India because Ashwin and Jadeja, Washington Sundar, Kuldeep Yadav, are better than pretty much any opposition spinner, with the exception of maybe Nathan Lyon. No disrespect, what Edge has bowled brilliantly. I like Mitchell Santner a lot as a cricketer. Uh, I think he's got a lot going for him and would be is pretty unlucky not to have played more. But they are better in the in the the data shows how much better they have been, like twenty to thirty percent better on every metric in Asia than every other spinner in the opposition, even on some quite spin friendly wickets. It takes out your fast bowlers, and I don't understand why you'd want to do that when you've got Jasprit Boomra, Siraj, Akash Deep, Shami when he's when he's fit, and it makes batting more difficult and um it doesn't play to india's strengths with with the bat uh and they they got caught out there and new zealand in the way that new zealand do adapted brilliantly to the conditions they just got on with it they didn't tie themselves into knots about how they're going to play this or whether it's unfair or whether it's this or whether it's that they just got on with it and played better cricket and once india got behind they didn't seem to be they didn't seem to have a way out and that is we we talked in our first episode about what a Gautam Gambir India team looks like when things start going wrong is he the most encouraging presence is he the guy who's going to pick the dressing room up and uh give them that belief and defend them in public and all of those slightly uh sort of annoying bombastic things that can look a bit ridiculous from the outside, but I'm sure do help when things are going wrong, particularly given how much scrutiny there is as an Indian cricketer. Um, because God knows you're not going to get that many friends outside of the dressing room environment when you start losing, so you need some inside it. And the evidence from the outside, um, KK will be able to to speak to this more, maybe kind of being closer to closer to the action, as it were. The evidence from the outside is that there wasn't really a, a pick me up and a reaction. Uh, it was once things started going wrong, they just start they just kept getting more and more wrong. And barring, you know, Rishabh Pant nearly pulls off a miracle in the in the last innings. Uh, Washington Sundar comes out of nowhere and does does really well. There's a few little performances here or there, but you you really can't say that India deserved any other result than what they got. I can't remember the last time I had essentially 15 days straight sinking feeling. It just felt like that um, and and insipid. I think you. I agree with you wholeheartedly that it, it just it felt like once um, things were, were on the back foot, it, it, the, the, there was only one way it was going. Um, resumes wise, I mean, yeah, this is his, his first job. This is his grad scheme, basically. He did an in- internship at KKR in terms of coaching. Um, and this is his, his proper job. Um, KK, what do you think of, uh, I mean, is there anything, what, what do you think India could have done better? What do you think Gotti, maybe his team could have done better or done more of to, to basically give Rohit a push? Cause Rohit Chama didn't have a good game, a good series as a captain, um, or a batsman. And he, and he admitted that himself. So yeah. What are your thoughts? Hmm. Yeah. Firstly, like I broadly agree with Nakul on oh, the yeah, pitches. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like a bit of a panic, panicked reaction to a situation they kind of like fell on the wrong side of in Bangalore. Uh, I mean, Tom Latham would have batted first on that same pitch, right? So you can't even say they misread the pitch to a blatant degree there, right? It, in retrospect, yeah, they did. Uh, but, you know, Tom Latham could well, have been in that you situation. Need, you need to prepare know, for, for Bangalore but, games by having a yeah, training camp in Manchester, I think. That's probably why, because that was quite ridiculous, the cloudy and sunny right, conditions. Yeah. yeah. So having, you know, played that game and lost it in those circumstances, I mean, you could be, there's two ways of going about it as an India think tank, which is either, look, we're still the better team. We're still going to win in normal Indian conditions where these freak things don't happen and back themselves to like go ahead and beat New Zealand 2-1. But then if you're 1-0 down and then I can kind of empathize with them a little bit uh, in terms of because you're like, we need those WTC points. So we can't leave room for a draw. 
uh, that's one thing. And the second thing maybe is that, you know, uh, three things in fact. Second thing is that Ashwin and Jadeja are uh, 38 and 35. Uh, so do you, if you're playing on a flat pitch, yeah, you probably like flat or flattish pitch. You're expecting them to, you know, bowl better, more control over a longer period, all that than the New Zealand, but they're also getting older. So like, you are maybe sliding to uh, starting to doubt that a little bit. Uh, and the third thing is you're going to Australia to play five tests. So you're like, okay, uh, we need to win these two test matches. And if you're playing on pitches where there's going to be bigger scores and more workload for our fast bowlers, and you want Bumrah to play if you're 1-0 down, at least in the second test, right? So then you're like, okay, what happens if we... He's had a history of injuries and your backup, Shami is already out and your backups are not as good as those two. Like, and certainly not as good as Bumbra, so, yeah. And you're in Australia. Yeah. So, with all of this coming together, I think they were like, yeah, it's a risk to go with turning pitches. The toss could become much more, uh, you know, vital. Uh, but we'll take that risk and I don't I guess they didn't expect that it would backfire to such an extent. And I'm, I'm sure if they took that risk, they took it knowing that it's a risk. I mean, they're not stupid. If we can see it, they can see it. So they took that risk and it didn't come off. And uh, they lost both tosses on those turning tracks. Right. Uh, and, you know, yeah, you can say that Pune wasn't as much of a rank turner as Mumbai was. But the intention in both games was to like, Really, like, bring India's spinners into the game as much as possible and also also take New Zealand's fast bowlers out of the game as much as possible. And it kind of, it, it just backfired. And sometimes uh, the margins can be smaller than 3 nil ends up looking. But this is what I feel happened overall. And, uh, yeah, and therefore, like, you have batters who are kind of out of form or, like, haven't been scoring runs. They knew we're going to be putting extra pressure on these guys. Some of them won't score runs, but they're like, we're willing to take I that. Mean, yeah, risk so the big story out. really is that the, and, uh, yeah. Ashwin and Jadeja didn't didn't score the runs that they've, they've been doing. So they should probably be dropped for that alone. I think. <laughs> <laughs> As they have for the last few years. <laughs> yeah, how, how, how dare, how dare, <laughs> how dare they don't score. Yeah, but your boy Wushi. Yeah, he he came in. Yeah. He he had a good chip. Is there a reason why he was batting so low down? Do they really think he's a a worse batsman than? I don't. I've seen this. I've seen this happen over many years now with the Indian team. So they tend to kind of bat their lower order in terms of age, almost right, seniority. Yeah. So it takes a little. It takes a little while for them to be like, okay, you know, you're actually better than like, Akshar Patel. You're actually little more capable than Ashwin in his current, you know, and Ashwin's still really good, but like it takes them a while to be like, no, okay, we'll play you above Ashwin or for, you know, them to do the same thing with Washington Sundar. So like he's been not out an absurd number of times in his brief test career already. And yeah, I mean, there's two ways of looking at it. One is these are your experienced guys. They put on a match winning, like, was it a double century stand against uh, Bangladesh? Yeah, it was. So, you know, you're like, this is a guy whom we've just brought back. So, there is a logic to that as well. I mean, I would, I would say that Washington is pretty much a top order batter, who, whose bowling has really come on. He should be batting possibly above Jadeja as well. But then again, Jadeja has proved himself home and away at number six yeah. sometimes. I, so I, think you can, I yeah. think, uh, yeah. So you can see why they do it, but it, it there's is a little bit of left and right thing as well. Maybe there a little bit as well, but uh, but there's that. Your well. yeah. is also totally the guy totally. they yeah. go to in a crisis all the time. Uh, you can, I think, you can yeah. argue quite strongly if you are old. You've got a really, really good seven, eight, nine. If you are arguing about the order in which your seven, eight, and nine are coming in, really, what about the top five and six who should be throwing the runs? Uh, mm. like they that's not their mm. job their job is bantering <laughs> the slips yeah? the, 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 bantering job... the slips is important 
Yeah, yeah, their, their job is bat pad. Um, <laughs> Gene of the, yeah, 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 of the yeah, crowd yeah. as well. Um, so, yeah. and, and <laughs> a look, lower, lower order runs are, are really important and they are always going to be very important, particularly mm -hmm. in in bowler friendly conditions, which we've seen, you know, mostly seamer friendly around the world, but but, but spin friendly mm -hmm. uh, as as well. I, it's not yeah. like opposition teams, I mean, your your um Crick info colleagues um Sid Monga and Shiv Jaraman did a piece so in so in tests in twenty seventeen in which spinners uh average more than twenty four so this is basically flatter pitches Indian spinners average twenty six visiting mm -hmm. spinners fifty seven but if well, as soon as you get yeah. the average but in in tests where spinners collectively go average under twenty four so turning pitches India so visiting spinners average 22 or put another way india average 20 to 23 mm. basically against spin but it's not like the opposition batters have been doing well in those turning position uh, conditions either because opposition spinners against india yeah. have been averaging 16 so it's just hard for everybody and it takes something like yeah. Rohit sharma's double hundred or that incredible innings by ollie pope uh um earlier in the year in hyderabad it takes something pretty extraordinary to score runs in those conditions, whoever you are, pretty much against whatever kind of spinner you are. You know, no disrespect to any of these. That's not true. Some disrespect to some of these guys, but mm -hmm. Joe Root and Glenn Phillips shouldn't be ripping through a batting lineup in... Well, we, we did in, cover in this in the, in the first episode. We, I remember we talked about this. Where I said... Um... The Joe Root, in his own kind of post-match uh, interview, he said someone like me shouldn't be taking six six four on this pitch on on the pitch. He said something along those lines where he said, like, yeah, he that, "That is the pitch is some it's quite ridiculous, yeah. basically." And that even that end of the pitch is a massive outlier. But that wasn't even a turning pitch. That was just a bad pitch. It wasn't mm. ready. Uh, it... Bad and and like yeah, yeah, ball, that was like everything a, that was a perfect together. storm. Um, yeah, but but it, that was just a bad yeah pitch it wasn't ready for the game to be played on it at all but even on you've seen a lot of young inexperienced spinners uh or in mitch santa's case old at a test level older and at test level relatively inexperienced spinners taking wickets you know matt kuhneman todd murphy uh tom hartley who now doesn't play for england anymore show bashir uh, have all taken have all taken wickets in in these conditions uh recently I I understand, I completely, I, I get why emotionally it's the response to a defeat. I don't think that, mm. I don't think the evidence bears it out. And I think there's actually a lot of evidence to show that it actually hurts India. If your intention is to produce a pitch that gets you back on, back on track. Because it because it makes it easier yeah. for the uh, for less lower make, quality spin, spinners basically yeah hundred percent and it reduce and it takes away yeah. your fast bowlers yeah. as a th as a factor when your mm -hmm. fast bowlers are really good and very good in these conditions about yep. you know you have to bowl fuller you have to bowl straighter yeah. you know at the times like the amount of if you look at Umesh Yadav is a perfect example of this the amount of bowls and LBWs that Umesh Yadav gets is oh god I suppose because he's probably not going to play for India again is ridiculous compared to other fast bowlers. Like it, it's it's a massive massive outlier because he bowls straight and gets a bit of reverse swing and it means that your batters who you know for all that we talk about indian batters can't play spin anymore you know these guys are really really good players and guys who can dominate oppositions you know mm -hmm. any one of rohit or gill or jesval or pant or you know or Kohli can or safraz they can take a game away from an opposition in a session by themselves all of them can and so question, you, sorry. you, yeah. you make it much, much harder for them to do that. So it's a, it's almost a little bit like you have you have India India see home conditions in the same way that overseas commentators who haven't actually done their research see home conditions, <laughs> which is weird. And it's been going yeah, on for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you know. It, New Zealand 
planned and executed and handled the changing conditions way, way, way better than India did. Uh, and they did exactly what they needed to do. Mm -hmm. They recognized when India were under pressure and just kept the pressure on, kept the pressure on, kept the pressure on, kept the pressure on and let India implode. And it was... They, it was played, on the home they played on the home team. They played, like the home, they played like a home team who'd taken a 1-0 lead, <laughs> frankly. Yeah. They, yeah. they played like a team who knew that their opposition were a little bit desperate and a little bit panicky and kind of let them, you know, they held out the sword and India ran onto it. The swagger was missing, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree entirely with your contention that India play their best home cricket on normal Indian pitches. I wouldn't say flat Indian pitches. Because you have had a few examples of really well, flat like ones. That will do that most do of its turning on any... day four and five. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Where you can score 400 so in the, the first The, the last basically. pitch. The, I think yeah. the last and series of England had decent pitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, was kind of like that. Yeah, except uh, Ranchi probably, which was a weird one where up and down bounce and all happened. Otherwise, even the Oli Pope won third innings, 100. But before that, they were like reasonable for mm -hmm. first inning scores for both teams. And India should have, frankly, like won it in the first inning. They threw away their wickets and whatever. That's That series is done. But uh, India didn't go one down and, you know, say, okay, we're going to like, you know, prepare like... Yeah, they didn't, get the, they didn't they get the pitch heaters out played. like in Pindi. Yeah. They backed themselves, basically. They backed their yeah, skill. They didn't do that. So, but it's interesting. Yeah, they back their skill, but also like I think there was a big, fairly big break for the Test cricketers after that series, right? Mm -hmm. As far as I remember. So, all this comes into play, which is why I think the shadow of the Australia tour hanging over this series kind of contributed. I don't know if that's the main reason for it, but contributed to their reaction of okay, we're gonna like. Yeah. So, what you mean is in, India now. have basically morphed into England because. Against Bangladesh in, the, in that last test, they went basketball, didn't they? And then now, basically everything is about Ashes yeah. cricket or Australia. And so there's, anything else is kind of by the by. <laughs> there is an element of that, right? It's bound to happen like you, yeah. you know. I mean, as much as they may say, okay, look, we all, we're only focusing on the next match or like all mm. oppositions. We res of course, they respect the opposition, but they are going to have these calculations yeah. in their mind as well. So, with all that considered, they probably took this risk and now they're regretting it. And yeah, it's interesting you brought up the uh, Pakistan example, right? I think there's a certain element of when Pakistan lost 2-0 to Bangladesh and they lost that first test. To me, it felt like they were overestimating their own pace bowlers. And you know how they could win home tests for a while. They had yeah, they were sort of they were sort of going off the potential the realization of Shaheen and Nasim could have forgetting oh, the fact that they bowled yeah. them to the ground and then not giving them actually any <laughs> and there weren't right, any yeah. runs to play with. It's weird you you mentioned that because um, I, suddenly in yeah, my feed right. the other day that clip reappeared of Ravi Shastri saying Shaheen Shafridi is not Wasim. He goes, "Tk, he hey, he's good, but he's not Wasim." And and I think that mm. that speaks to the point you made about them mm. overestimating. Does that, does, yeah, so so Pakistan kind of overestimated themselves and didn't really like figure out how to maximize home advantage. And then they were like, look, to beat this England team, th this is also a good idea. Let's go with like finger spinners and like, you know, turning there's pitches also, like, and let's see what happens, right? There's also a bit of desperation. There's a there's kind of, there's a, they, they, they a bit of desperation there, again. You know, they so, sack the selection panel, all of this, all of this stuff and yeah. all of this. You know, chaos, 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 swirl, swirl, swirl. Yeah. And sometimes Pakistan happens somewhere in there and they win and they win a couple of test matches. Um India dude not... looks like a... mm. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. With... Yeah. With India, sorry, sorry, let me just finish the point. Uh, with India, I think it's kind of a rever uh, reverse of that, in the sense that they kind of I won't say underestimated their spinners, but like, you know, they like they know quite well that these guys can win them matches on normal pitches. But I think they were like, no, we've got to like, we kind of fear New Zealand's fast bowlers also like doing something on say a normal Indian pitch where they can get into the game. So I think they kind of, I don't know, if 
if i have ashwin and jadeja in my team and kuldeep or akshar or washington i'm going to like be like look these are the best spinners in the world i'm going to like make sure the other spin attacks weaknesses are exposed by making them bowl longer spells and so did the kiwis all of the that right hand, they they kind of but i think had the blueprint to play spinners do you think the kiwis had the blueprint Sorry? to play spinners in these conditions i mean they had a plan it can work or not but like you know uh, over a shorter contest all these differences between how good your spinners are and the opposition spinners are they can get narrower right which is what we saw happen and the toss can get much more influential on yeah, the result you've which still got again, a bad hand happen. in the first inning so, which new zealand did twice mm-hmm. and i think they they did very very well not to get they did, yeah. one particular approach like i think mm-hmm. i i'm not somebody who's militantly against the sweep shot as a lot of people are uh and i, I don't think necessarily mm-hmm. coming you mm-hmm. have to use your feet and come down the track to the spinners um but um mm-hmm. equally not everyone is as good as this not everyone in the england team is as good as a sweep at as joe root and ben duckett are uh it doesn't necessarily work uh, for yeah. so well for just picking an example at random ollie pope who's actually really good playing square of the wicket he's a really good cutter of the ball and I think he's probably better off maybe playing mm. spin off the back foot, but because the kind of you know the they they it, New Zealand allowed their batters to work out individual plans to play spin in a way that I think other teams haven't done quite so successfully. Um, mm. I mean, also frankly, if you've got Justin think, Boomer in your team, yeah, why on earth would you want to render him irrelevant? Hmm. Yeah, especially as you know he's yeah. he was pretty much. Yeah, the, the plan was Agreed. probably already in place to rest him for the third test, regardless. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. I think so India, why not? India are a weirdly insecure superpower. <laughs> yeah, that 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 about sums it up. I think. <laughs> not yeah. just in cricket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, we're talking about in- insecurity, yeah. uh, or maybe too much security. The big, uh, what, uh, Karthik, what are the rumours about um, the, the boards and, and the higher-ups wanted to wanted the uh, big boys to play domestic cricket um, and they refused because of workload or something? Is there any truth to this or is this just internet hearsay? I would go with, um, I mean, I'll, here's the thing, like you get these sort of unnamed quote stories all the time and very often it's, it's, it's a kind of trial balloon, right? You kind of throw something out there and see how mm-hmm. see how people react, and then like uh, you know, then kind of use that to frame a decision that so, you take. So later. you you being somebody. So in the board, I'm not. Or you being a journalist. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of why this happens, right? And so, me being a, I'd be very skeptical of. Anytime you know these kind of sto- these kinds of stories come out, because there is often an agenda behind it, which the journalist is happy to kind of serve, mm-hmm. right? Because they get like a nice story out of it, and it, I mean I understand that as well. But like that's the mechanism at work here, so I'm not going to pay too much credence to any of that. But I do think like with all cricketers, however good they are, once they get into their late thirties. Uh, there is going to be some pressure, especially in a country like India with so much talent just waiting to break into the, you know, first 11. So uh, that pressure is going to be there. So, I mean, there was this thing that these four seniors are going to be under pressure and how they how they go in Australia could determine their futures and stuff. I mean, whether or not there is act- actively thinking of that kind going on within the board or the selectors. And, and as though that that's not true there. all the time anyway. Exactly. And, and naturally, exactly they that. might be just yeah. coming to that point regardless, so, and they may decide themselves. Precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so okay. yeah, that pressure is there. I don't... Uh, sorry, what was the uh, rumour thing you brought up? About them playing uh, the domestic cricket. Yeah. Domestic cricket. They've not played domestic some of them, like Kohli played his last Ranji match before. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing that gets banded around, yeah. Right? 
and he does not need to play ranji trophy cricket kohli virat kohli does not need to play ranji trophy cricket plus he yes. played the bangladesh and series. and also i think right so it's not like he's coming cold to uh, red ball cricket after so the idea that you should look at virat kohli like and that. say that's what this guy needs more cricket is yeah. wild yeah. to me <laughs> And yeah. also the the thing that they, they don't prepare yeah, and you those know, kind of spinning like, pitches anyway, really for for, for for Ranji. Yeah, and they're going to be at the mercy of say like Kohli plays for Delhi and Delhi really need they're desperate for a result, so they're going to maybe prepare yeah. a seeming pitch somewhere. Let's say, for mm-hmm. example, they they could right. Like he just has to play there. What he would prefer is like, hey, I want to like peel bat on ball and get some confidence again. Maybe just. Solid net session is what he needs, <clears throat> or if he's like, okay, I want to play against left arm spinners again. Like he can call up like twenty left arm spinners and be like, just keep bowling to me, right? What serves him better? You should call going Marino. into a test yeah. match. I really you should call Moeen. Say, look, you my friend, come. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to bowl, bowl left arm, and then uh, somebody else as well who does who. Oh yeah, left like arm. that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like. It's mm-hmm. really reactionary, right? Like, oh, they lose, therefore all these other. Yeah. Well, I, I made the reason. Yeah, we're, losing. Sorry, we're all we're all a little bit guilty of this, you know. I waste no time in, you know, mm-hmm. I the the two sort of pieces of analysis or whatever I've had brewing for a little while are the question about what happens, sort of in terms of a mindset and in terms of a team environment with Gumbeard, and what and why India's reaction to. Uh, a defeat or to a setback isn't always the most helpful one and i i think i'm justified in applying mm. those to this situation but we are all guilty of retrofitting our favorite examples to whatever has just happened with greater yeah. or lesser degrees of yeah. of justifiability Absolutely. guys my mum blamed me for the series defeat yeah uh, is, that, guys... is, is that is that her, is that her, <laughs> she could be right standard you know. mo she could be right well, well, yeah essentially if, if india lose then then it's like you're watching it you, like you've paused it to be on a zoom why are you doing this oh, no, and no, i'm no, blaming no. i'm that's blaming not, our colleague with anchor that that's no? not what i'm that but like for example if she if she has a job interview and it doesn't go well or you miss a you miss a flight uh joshi no, bye it's, it's only cricket ah hmm? it's only the match she's like tuki kita Parata, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, but well, like, it's not me, right? Like, what about the Bangladesh series?" <laughs> Look, it's 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 as, it's as rational as like any of the explanations that cricket people. Well, the are real reason is Ritankar Bandupadhyay, right? our colleague, has not been on the podcast for a long time, and he was. Uh, I said this in the group, and I told him this too. That's it. Not that's I mean, it. to his face. Yeah. So that's it. So either he, so. So two things need to happen. He needs to be sacked from the podcast, and BCCI need to hire him. To, I think he might be a New Zealand fan because he is a guy from Kolkata who sports CSK. So if I extrapolate that to international cricket, India to New Zealand is probably roughly analogous. I'm guessing in terms of distance, not south. I don't know. I think we. Can... <laughs> <It's hard for laughs> I, haven't no, worked no, out the I was going to say you're probably somewhere in the Maldives. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I haven't worked out the exact proportionality, but um, it could be. Uh, guys, I want to get on to like you guys know that you guys have seen that. So basically, like yeah. your maps really oh, yeah, lie yeah. to you, right? Especially like the yes. the Mercator projection, right? Which kind of squeezes tropical regions and it blows up like the temperate regions. So I think like okay, he might be Indonesia, Indonesia is massive. Yeah, Australia, <laughs> Australia, Australia, yeah, is wider. This is this is. Australia <laughs> is literally wider than the moon. And doesn't Bangalore have more people than New Zealand? Yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah, plus one now because yeah. Rachin Ravindra, and New Zealand lose. Yeah, New Zealand. I think the way to avoid Indian, Indian, yeah. as well. So, like New Zealand, have got the idea just to get Indian I, spinners. I think the way to stop uh, Ravindra doing this in the yeah. um, is essentially Bangalore can trap him in a traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, and I still love the, the you know the video <laughs> clip of him going to his his grand's house and she's like doing the thing with the salt and the mirch and everything else. It's like yeah, he's just just average Indian granny. <laughs> like it was just brilliant, and all his mates are like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> just just on a, a serious point around another ground in this in this series. Mm-hmm. Why why is Pune still getting major matches? Pune is has got to be. I've never had the misfortune of watching a game there, but 
it is on an expressway. It's not actually in Pune. Half of it doesn't have a roof, despite no. the fact it was built in the last 15 years. On the first day, there were riots mm -hmm. because people couldn't get water and people were fainting. Uh, and they hadn't had a test match for five years, I think, by that point. Would they not want to make a slightly better mm. showing uh, of it? Uh, Pune, even by the very, very low standards of how fans are treated in Indian stadia, Pune is, has shown itself repeatedly mm. to be disgraceful. I don't yeah, know. Have you, have, you, have, you, have you watched I mean, but, but here's the thing. You, you, gave, you gave the answer yourself. It said, you said it's been five years since they hosted and so, you know, this stuff works on a rotation basis. And sometimes rotation plus whoever is like, whichever uh, member state associations are closer to the PCCI president or secretaries association. So all of these factors come into play. So, I mean, yeah. Are there, are there, no, are there no minimum uh, standards that a grant the, has to meet? Uh, there's no incentive. There is, there is no incentive there's no incentive for any ground to treat spectators right. well they can continue just going along as they've been going and they'll continue to get matches and that's all Nicole, they this, want right Nicole, this goes back a little bit to your uh, point um, when we spoke about uh Ganpur and uh our and Shukla uncle um talking about uh, basically having no responsibility about the rain uh they just he got that because he's what the, the vice president of the bcci he decided that there should be a game there it could have been Lucknow, but it, it was there i think it's just for the crack basically <laughs> More I than think he's, from, else. he's from kanpur exactly, I mean, that, exactly I, that yeah and i also see the i also see the the side of the other side of it right like i i completely don't subscribe to this elitist view of like oh only mm -hmm. like five major cities should host oh, yeah, yeah, test cricket that's rubbish no i mean yeah. right i do think however that test cricket is best in grounds which are closer to the city center people tend to i mean say that doesn't necessarily mean the big cities i mean indoor gets great crowds because it's you right can there check in the your, middle you of can the check city. the score at work uh, on top work early and go to the game and Indore is a great, That's right, a great, yeah. great example of that yeah. because it's kind of a, a major, a major hub in MP. So mm. there are enough kind of cities around if mm. you really wanted to commute, you could go. Based, yeah, from one of the even like uh, Delhi, you know, the yeah. you don't the coat like as well has its problems, but it's accessible and in a in a part of Delhi where people actually live it, and you yeah. can get to. Yep. Yeah. I mean, exactly that. Yeah, which is why Delhi matches get brilliant crowds, right? Like the test match against Australia last year was. Even if you can breathe or like, not, they come. It's, it's so, quite impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they're there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I see the point of view of taking test cricket to as many centers as possible, and I think that's a good idea. I just, I mean, some grounds are just too far away for people to. They might do it on an evening for a day-night game or a night game. It's logistically a little more feasible. And again, these are going to be people with private vehicles, like because in the these places Pune aren't attached by public transport either. On so the Pune Mumbai Expressway. You shouldn't call it. You shouldn't it's basically call it a service Pune, station. Right? Is what it is. It's Newport yeah, yeah, basically, it is literally on. It's it's, it's an it's, it's a place called Gahunde, which is it's those, yeah. one of those dubbers you get. Yeah. That's that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You go a little further, and you're like approaching, you know, the outskirts of like Navi Mumbai and all that. So, okay. yeah, that is not. I just want to um, talk a little bit about the human aspect yeah. of of, of um, the cricket. Um, I know we, we we will we've actually been quite light on Gumbi um, so far, but I want to talk about Rohit and uh, Virat. Virat look came into Bangladesh having had a baby. Rohit has had um, a pretty bad series. And I, I just wonder with him, I mean, he's obviously going to miss the first test of the, of the Boru Gavaska, uh, the Gavaska uh, trophy and potentially more, depending on how it works. Um, he's captain of India. He's having a baby. I mean, look, yes, he's not pregnant. But, I mean, do you think if, if we're being maybe 
empathetic that that we don't know the ins and outs of it but could it be that that's also how his wife is 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 kind of weighing on him a little bit like you know maybe he feels that she he can't be there or whoever else is there he's in touch do you think that kind of thing has an impact because it is now what the last trimester right it's it's actually going to be fairly soon do you think or am i being too kind to him that he should be should man up he's the captain of india Honestly, like I don't want to comment on like his uh, personal life at all. No, what I mean is, it, it, look, he's we, we know uh, it's, it's a public record that yeah. he's having you know, a child. Um, he is the captain of India. Yeah. Having a child yeah. is stressful at the best of times, especially you mm-hmm. know as dad. But he's also got to win test matches. Mm-hmm. Do you think there is actually a lot for him to potentially be dealing with at the time? And then I'm trying to think why he's been having such a shocking time of it because it just seems very unusual to me. I'm I mean, trying to think: oh, a... is there anything outside of cricket that maybe is causing that? I, I think I, I'll just go with the cricketing explanation, which is, and he himself has kind of acknowledged it, that he's been trying to bat in a different way, even in test cricket. And look, some of it is spillover, right? You make every decision, every choice you make as a cricketer has is a, is a trade-off, right? So where we were like praising him to the skies when like he started really going after the bowling in the first, in the power play, whether it's mm-hmm. ODIs or T20Is, right? And... It's bound to have some effect on how you bat, like your instincts. It's bound to like slightly, you know, weaken your kind of defensive instincts as a test cricketer. I mean, KL Rahul has had a career basically struggling with this transition, right? And I think it's kind of happened to Rohit Sharma in these last two series. Uh, Against England, like he was going at 70 strike rate in the first 10 overs uh, in the test series at home like earlier this year and it was the same sort of approach maybe calibrated slightly this way or that but whatever like it was working for him he was working for India he scored 200s and uh, you know some at some point it's bound to like or especially on tougher pitches suddenly you're going to like start getting low scores and that's what's happened to him and I don't think there's anything terminally wrong with his game i just think he's made a choice and it's kind of fired on him and he said he's going to like that's his batting. have a rethink so you think his so batting we'll see how um, he should be able to compartmentalize co- captaining versus batting right he, he should be able he's to done have it fair, he's done it fairly successfully so far throughout his captaincy career yeah exactly um, my point. and i think that that's what leads hmm. me to think is there something else you, or is it the coaching is it going to be it's just kind of frazzled his mind Honestly, I think I think the spotlight on things like captaincy and say field placements that just tends to magnify when you're losing, right? Now, honestly, I can't remember like whether like his fields were like spot on and brilliant when India were beating England four mm-hmm. one, and they may have been or not. But point is like these things tend to get magnified when your team loses and tactical decisions. As well, right? Like, oh, he didn't bowl Jadeja from the end where Ashwin wanted, Ashwin was suggesting, or where Ajaz Patel had taken all those wickets. He's like stubborn, you know, he's like, no, Jadeja bowls from the other end. Now, it could have come off as well. There might be reasons for like continuing to bowl Jadeja from the other end. It just so happens that on this day, okay, Jadeja switches ends and then start, suddenly starts taking wickets, and Rohit looks like a bit of a fool. But you don't know that unless it happens like you so i i mean i think losing just magnifies all this and suddenly he looks like a bad captain and that happens to every captain when they win they're great yeah, when they um, lose they're not it's the same i think it was slightly more um justifiable in Dhoni's case but you know he's calm when they win he's inactive when they lose um I, I, and, and look, I yeah. Tony probably did get check out, check out of Test cricket a little bit mentally towards the end, but that so the I think the it's 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 neither a case of it's neither a case of man up nor is it a case of you know he's I think as far as Gumbeard he still has a lot to do to prove those. Uh, he still has a lot to do to prove those who who are critical of of him and his style and his uh, appointment wrong, but it's way too early to te- it's way too early to mm. 
to say whether there's a, a rift or anything between him and the captain. And oh, no, I didn't mean a ha- rift. I just meant maybe he's just not um, been the support for the cap. Because obviously, look, in, in cricket, captain is essentially the most important role. He's essentially coaching on the pitch. Uh, and, and the coach has to support that. And now, obviously, we've been critical of why God, he got the job in the first place. Like, no experience, just a bit of mentoring. Um, which leads me maybe to think that, well, there's other two things to play, really. One is some kind of um, trade he's got it in response for, for something else or nepotism, or it is to do with the type of position it is. He's just there to oversee, and the other guys are doing what, you know, the work. And, uh, and so in that case, is he not supporting the captain and the players well enough? I don't if remember how many other serious <clears throat> candidates there actually were interested in the position i think a lot of people did make themselves unavailable for various reasons particularly the in given that india yeah. don't want to split the formats mm-hmm. um well, Ponting is... says that, right? Ponting says yeah, that. yeah and, and i feel and, it's fine i get to spend time with my kids otherwise why do i want to be doing be on the road with the yeah side? and uh, jason gillespie has um has said repeatedly that he didn't you know he's turned down a lot of jobs over the over the years because he didn't want to do all format on the road all the time uh mm. Coaching, so it's lucky for him that the PCB have taken selections out of, off his plate. Um, but, um, but test cricket is test cricket for given the number of tactical decisions you make as a captain is also weirdly resistant to tactics because it's such a it's an individual, it's a series of individual games disguised as a team sport. Absolutely, you can. You can select someone for reasons that don't make any sense and they take a five foot or they take 100. Or you can pick someone for reasons that make complete mm. sense and they don't do very well and you look like an idiot. Or you can move a fielder and the catch goes straight to them. Or you can move a fielder because you think this guy fends off his hips awkwardly uh, and then it, the ball just doesn't go there and no one even remembers that you moved the guy. Mm. Um, there are there are instances... like. Probably Mohamed Siraj wasn't the right choice as Night Watch. Um, and uh, in, in other circumstances, maybe they didn't even need to be a Night Watcher in those circumstances. I'm personally and not he, a huge fan of it. Uh, but and, that, and you should also are... be told not to take a review. Well, yeah, if you're an, I think if you're the Night Watcher, don't take a review is probably a decent, um, a decent yeah. policy in general. Uh, mm. Certainly if you don't trust the guy to actually um, know what's happening. Uh, Even though he's, I heard he's a DSP now, so he's, he's, um, he's I keep seeing pictures of him in uniform. I mean, the, look, we should be able to trust the police, but still, uh, maybe not my, my, my interactions with the Indian police have been mercif- mercifully brief, uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, but no, let's not finish that conversation. Um, but um, <laughs> we, th- there is cricket for a sport that prides itself on analysis and prides itself on uh, being uh, a sport where we look a bit deeper and those of us who love test cricket in particular love to think of ourselves as you know intellectual and above all the uh, the you know above all the noise um, but it's just as reactive and just as uh, uh, ex post fact prone to ex post facto explanations as uh, as any other as any other sport and actually if you look at the long long history of test cricket it doesn't have tactical schools in the same way that say football does mm-hmm. it is a weirdly anti-intellectual sport for all of its uh, complications of class <laughs> and breeding and uh, and uh, you know long slow developing storylines and I think that's because it's basically a bunch of individual battles disguised as a team as a team sport where you know your job really is to prepare the individuals as well as you can to do what they can and support them as best as they can and sometimes and maximize the chances of it coming off more but sometimes it still won't come off um, well, this is why we have matchups right this is why we talk all, all about matchups and those kind of things because because of that individual nature of it well yeah for sure but also team environment the the team in, the team environment to to make sure that you there's an, there's enough i think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good in what uh Brendan McCullum and, and the likes have been saying for all this time and a lot of the the 
the bluster around uh, around Shastri, you know, he deliberately took the pressure on himself. Um, and I think that that is a valuable role for a coach. It doesn't suit everybody. Mm-hmm. And you can have, you can just as easily be a Gary mm-hmm. Kirsten or a Duncan Fletcher and sit in the background and uh, and be very very impassive. Or even McCullum, like McCullum doesn't really talk after. I think he said he doesn't want to talk after victories. Um, he'll only talk after defeats. But I think that 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 is something that Gotham Gavir is going to have to learn how to do very very quickly. He's, um, he was one of the quieter ones in that dressing room when he was a player, right? He's not the one you would hear as much of Kabez Sebag or anyone else. They oh, were, I mean, he was pretty spiky. Oh, no, spiky on the pitch, but in terms of the media, like you didn't really hear him much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Compared to like the other guys, um, I want to ask you. Actually, you mentioned uh, McCullum and Kirsten. I was just thinking, I don't, maybe because um, it was a while ago, but I don't think Gary Kirsten had many um, managerial jobs before he became India coach, right? And I don't think McCullum did much. Well, he did a little bit of T Twenty stuff but before England. McCullum had, coached, McCullum had coached in the IPL. He'd coached uh, yeah. Trinbago <clears throat> Night Riders. Uh, very, very successfully in 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 the CPL, um, but he he largely got the job um, because he impressed them with his personality and because he he kind of was sort of coaching New Zealand while he was captain and built that atmosphere and rescued them from a yeah. from a position where they were in serious trouble and very unpopular with the public and made them a really aggressive team. He got them he got the job. Basically, because of his strength of of personality rather than his 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 CV. It's so like uh, Tim Payne says, "Do you like him as a bloke?" Essentially, is that kind of thing. A little bit. And, the, and Rob Key was like, "Yeah, I do like him as a bloke. Get him in." Basically, uh, I'm assuming Rob. It was Rob Key, right? Who, who hired him? I think yeah, was. that's right. Yeah. So get Gary Kirsten. I mean, I could equally look this up, but um, do you guys remember if Gary Kirsten had many other jobs beforehand? He was, he was quite young as well. It was, it was his first coaching job. Yeah, and he won the World Cup. Um, hmm. Okay, so we should, we should give Gotti more time or we should carry on criticising. Either way, we, we can be Indian uncles about it. It's fine. Um, we can say <laughs> we'll never be as good as Gary. Look at look at Kirsten Saab's beta and, and you, Gotham. What are you doing? <laughs> That's what we were going to say to you. <laughs> um, shall, we, shall we talk about uh, the Kiwis and, and maybe the parallels uh with the last time that India were in Australia, so we're going to talk about the BGT shortly anyway, um, and, and what this kind of sense of foreboding we have. Uh, last time, Kohli captain disappeared um, after the first game, so and there were a number of injuries. Australia, uh, sorry, India then played with you know under Ajinkya uh, Rahane and obviously did what they did. Ajinkya Latham this time seems to have have done the business for for New Zealand. Um, do you think there's any? any kind of correlation or any kind of parallels or am I just trying to make everything about India because of my innate bias? In, in terms of the size of like the, it's something that no one would expect that India to win a game, uh, a win Australia. It's, 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 yeah, it's as unexpected and like out of the blue as that was. And yeah, only thing is there, it was India who themselves were 36 all out and came back from that. that. This time it's New Zealand inflicting the forty six all out. Yeah, it's a little it's a little different because they were yeah. front running throughout the entire uh, series. It's also I think it's actually it's, it's more of a I don't know yeah. it's more of an achievement, and, honestly. Winning three nil in India against for all we said about that, they're not winning. Yeah. Winning three nil winning three nil against this India team in India is one of the all time great one of not the greatest even. achievements in, in test cricket ever. And especially, especially if you're comparing the two, especially because India had already gone and won that's in also Australia. Well, you know, I was referring more to the fact the injuries. Yeah. So, I mean, at least, at, yeah, except for the <laughs> GABA game where you're like, how the hell did that yeah. happen, right? And yeah, again, like a lot of things went India's way, uh, like uh, on on field kind of like control percentages and luck and all of that little bit went India's way. Otherwise, they couldn't have, they couldn't have one to one. But uh, in any case, yeah, they had to like come through, a, I don't know, they, they wouldn't have expected anything other than defeat when they started that test match for sure. And I don't know what New Zealand's ex- best expectations from this tour were, but clearly like they far exceeded, exceeded well, maybe whatever they just, those were. Sorry, uh, so in that 
yeah in that sense they've definitely like you know it's just as unexpected but uh, yeah this like nakul says is is even more of a of a shock result like uh, i would just say that like it kind of shows the value of just sticking to like your experienced players right like mitchell sandner has been playing test cricket not very well i mean not very successfully for a while uh ish so the i mean he, he barely bowled in the one game he played but he's, he's been around, around for a while also, uh, uh ajaz patel like look they've come on india tours before and ajaz patel yeah he had that end for but these are not people who've had great is, success right? but i think so is, over is many right years in thinking that hmm? ajaz has basically done nothing in new zealand he barely so, bowls or plays Yeah. He's barely played yeah, in New Zealand. He barely Zealand. plays. Yeah. He barely bowls when he yeah. does play because so, they they have yeah. incredibly flat pitches where you where you yeah. use yeah. where you use seamers. Um the the, po- the point is that like they've, you know, these are not they're not looking for a quick fix, right? They're not like okay, we had Ajaz Patel last time or Santner has been here twice, not done much. We pick these guys being like look, we know you have a certain amount of ability. you know you can get better with experience and we're realistic that we probably don't have That's better the thing. it is slightly forced with new zealand because the player system. pool is so much smaller than than most countries so you kind yeah. of don't have the option yeah, but, to be super reactive because eventually you'll just burn through everyone and then you'll have to start again yeah yeah and like i think the contrast you could say is with like and again that sometimes works as well you bring like completely new guys on the basis <laughs> of release heights and what not maybe that can win you like a game here and there so I, i'm not knocking that either but in general i think like just experience and like know how and kind of figuring things out over time really does help teams and you know and it's happened that way with new zealand they had a lot of luck in this series as well primarily with the tosses uh including in bangalore where they lost the toss. conditions in there really the one toss where i did that the zealand yeah the zealand one toss that don't have you know positions like that anymore <laughs> that that the the ah, like global new zealand, new zealand. Yeah. <laughs> they do whenever <laughs> india go there when every when they don't when like uh, south africa you've ever seen this the clouds and suddenly suddenly like keshav maharaj is the player of the series right <laughs> which yeah so but yeah it, it goes to show that like i mean they had a lot of luck to come back to that point they lost the one toss that you wanted to lose in the series they won the two that you really desperately wanted to win and they had the players to kind of exploit that they and i think uh, uh glen phillips is like a really important part of that he's averaged last i checked was like 26 since his uh test comeback last year which is amazing for a guy who was a wicket keeper not that point. long he ago right? start bowling he, 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 he does he, he started yeah. bowling because he didn't want to keep and the thing he does anymore, and he needed <laughs> a secondary skill so that he wouldn't have mm. to keep wicket anymore yeah yeah i mean looking at that i think australia they were already inclined to bringing glen maxwell on their sri lanka tour but i think looking at this other glen do so well uh in this role i think they'll get me a like, glen who's a great fielder uh, we all have that one f- we all have that one friend who's maybe often, yeah. in the medical profession <laughs> or something and then suddenly starts coding on weekends just for fun and is is amazing that's that's glen phillips yeah but the thing uh, yeah the thing glen phillips does is he actually gives it a rip right so you know you give yourself a chance of if your role is like i'm going to bowl a few overs i'm going to like uh bat at 7 and maybe score make like one or two nice cameos through a series he's the perfect cricketer for when india decide okay we're going to like roll out like mm. turning pitches so- which are, we're going to we're going to you know make pitches that uh turn these matches into like two i mean three day games where 
uh, these sorts of small contributions you're going to be really ridiculously generous up. hosts for it reminds me a lot of the role that Colin de Grandon played in the 2019 mm. World Cup as those pitches got slower mm. and slower and lost all life suddenly Colin de Grandon's ability to bowl mm. wicket to wicket uh, yeah. and uh, not allow the ball to bounce and just bowl cutters like he bowled ridiculously well in that Lord's final and it's kind of it's those yeah Frankly, normally in uh, normally you don't expect your your bit part players to play quite such a uh, a role, uh, but when the when the conditions become sort of more, as you say, extreme, those uh, the value of those sort of secondary and tertiary contributions become become even more valuable. Then supporting the likes of Devon Conway, who I thought batted brilliantly during this series, or Ravindra, who who batted. Batted terrifically. Matt Henry was unbelievable in that first yeah. test match. Um and it yeah. and how much of this is replicable for other teams, I don't know, because because New Zealand have to work mm. out ways of punching above their weight because they're such a small so such a small playing pool. They can't afford to be so reactive with their selection. Well, so they, 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 have, they, yeah. they have had periods, notably Prima Cullum. Where it was a really bad dressing room environment, where it was really toxic, where players didn't want to be there, where the fans didn't like them very much, uh, and they've taken on that legacy that built by McCullum and then continued by Williamson, where everyone who comes into that team feels like they've got a settled role, uh, or like they've got a clear role, like they know what they're going to do, they're going to be backed to do it, they're going to be backed to figure it out in their own way, um. Which, which I think speaks to to, to Karthik's point of of not um, of not adding too much external pressure uh, to a situation that, frankly, doesn't doesn't require mm. it. Like the you know, it's the easiest thing in the world to say this guy doesn't care or this guy isn't motivated. It's just, just nonsense, it's just nonsense most of the mm. time. Like you, mm-hmm. pretty much all of the time. Um, like you don't get to like you don't get through the ridiculous numbers game of Indian cricket, or you don't push yourself forward as a, as a cricketer in a country that doesn't actually value cricket that much where the money isn't that great and there's all sorts of opportunities to uh, to turn aside like in New Zealand without being without being driven and without really wanting to do it and to be there. And... Yeah, that's just a lazy criticism, really, when, when people say that, for all yeah. the reasons you've just mentioned. Yeah, it's just, as soon as you take that, I kind of stop listening, frankly. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, absolutely. Um Let's yeah. should we should we you say you've you've given me so many other segues that I can go down. I, I'm struggling which way to go. Uh, Colin de Granholm, great hair. Firstly, um, se- secondly, should we talk about about um, phasing players out then um, a little bit? I, I heard Jimmy Anderson talk um, about how he was essentially forced to retire in a Manchester bar hotel bar. Um, do you think something similar needs to happen or will happen with the, I guess, the older Indian guys, potentially the end of the the, the, the Border Gavaskar trophy? Or do you think they'll be allowed to leave when they want to? And also, where's the balance? Like with New Zealand, you mentioned that they can't be reactive, but they also need to kind of keep people in and, in and around for some sort of continuity. Mm. How does India manage that going forward? Because I thought, It'll it'll just happen as it tends to, right? That is the most uh, in the sense. The I mean, sure, they will have it happens. <laughs> These things happen. It's true, like, that is absolutely true. <laughs> no, no, in, yeah, but in the sense that I'm sure the selectors and you know, think team think tank will know. Okay, these are the next guys we're going to look at. So you know, if we need to replace Virat Kohli, this is the guy we bring in, or whatever. Uh, they'll know that, but when it'll happen, will come down to like okay, they you know, series by series, basically, probably, or season by season. Like, I don't think they. I think succession planning, in the sense that oh, okay, we're gonna phase this guy out first, bring in that. It I, it really doesn't work that way. I don't think anybody. You can post facto say, oh, you know, they managed it so well. But I think usually uh, 
events just conspire to make it look like that. So with the, with the India A team, yeah. is there anybody you particularly look at and think, okay, this could be the next Kohli, for example, or at least batter number four and hold it down for a long time? Or do you think that person isn't in the setup yet? I, I, look, the say, not the next Kohli, the, the next number four. I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. The next big number four, I mean, yeah. Uh, honestly, I mean, there's... It's a good question. I don't know. Like, There's too many really good batters See. in Indian cricket, right? There's a lot of them. So I don't think they're, they're going to lack for quality batters when the time comes. The next Kohli is like a... Or the next... This is the this is the guy who's going to be your number four. I think Shubman Gill should probably three, bat yeah. four and not three in the long run. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's one way of. Okay, so your answer is K and Rahul. I get it. Play. <laughs> K and Rahul could be like an an answer too. Like I, I yeah I honestly like I. I don't write off the guy like a lot of. Of course, you live do. in Bangalore. You, you you need to be yeah. able to like function there in are, the city. I don't think Bangalore loves him as much Fair as enough. they should. Still his home, right? Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah, that's a separate conversation for. But uh, I don't know. Maybe like really long term, you look at like Mushir Khan and how how many runs he's scoring in what kinds of situations. Mm-hmm. At the age he's in, he looks like a really special player. Yeah, and, and the guys Could who scored, the guys who scored runs in the in the India A game. Uh, Sai Sudarshan and Dev Dutt Particle has already played some mm. a little bit of test cricket. Um, uh, mm-hmm. Sai Sudarshan yeah. seems like yeah. a guy who can adapt to pretty much any situation you throw at him, um, which which is mm-hmm. which is hugely impressive. Um, those seem to be the guys at the moment who are who are first cabs off the rank. Um, you could have a situation where. Mm. I don't know if number f- number four seems a little high for Dhruv Jurel, but there will be a. Mm-hmm. There will be a um, there's a case to be made of finding a way of playing mm-hmm. him as a batter because he looks so impressive. Can I just stop in you there? That, in uh, that England you, series. No, mm-hmm. no, I just want to make a, uh, ask a question about that. Look, um, I'm a fan basically because of when I grew up watching cricket. But I'm a fan of openers and, and top order batsmen who just throw down a few overs of spin. Uh, mm-hmm. um, that doesn't seem to happen as much. These days, um, but someone like Washi could he bat that high potentially? Oh, he doesn't. Uh, Tamil Na- for Tamil Nadu, um, I think that would be that would be an ask because you want Washington Sundar to be able to bowl a good number of overs, and you're not going to get that if you bat him in the top four. And I don't think he is quite good enough, okay. as good a well, batter if- as he is, to be batting in the top four. <laughs> Taisa Darshan does bowl a little I, bit, doesn't I, he? Jaswal bowls a little bit as well, right? Not, not very well, That's but yeah, problem, right? Like so, he, there was a good time when we were in the same world. We we're searching, could throw down a few overs, and you know, could do a job. Uh, but is it, I mean, that was a time when India were yeah, playing four games. bowlers all the time, and you needed those overs. Like they, in Test cricket, they yeah. don't need those overs. In white ball cricket, you are getting some players who are bowling a little bit now, like Riyan Parag and uh, Abhishek Sharma yeah. and stuff. So I think there's. Two two different teams and two different and uh, requirements here. I, I don't think there's a requirement for a top order. Yeah, it's, it's, very much, it's very much just a nice to have when you consider that India's top four of India's top yeah. five spinners are all capable of batting at, potentially at six or seven. Yeah. But what about someone like Lord Tucker, who's, um, yeah. I, I guess, is not in the running for Australia, but did a job last time also against England? Um, I think there's been talk about. No, uh, I think Gothi does is not particularly bothered about a, a kind of a pace bowling all rounder or a medium pace all rounder. I mean, how does that affect the lineup? But you have you have Nitish Kumar ready on the tour, and you know, I have a feeling he might play. If you've got one, one test or if two, you've got one, if, great. A, and we thought, hard, we thought it might be hard. We thought it might be hard for a little while, and he seemed to be doing the job till he got injured. Mm-hmm. Um, but India, you know, India went through the thing of trying to force Irfan Patan to be a seam bowling. The guy opened just insane, isn't it? He batted, he batted, <laughs> certainly got three. Um, yeah. And kind of uh, hmm. the one, my dad's most uncle opinion that I agree with is that that ruined Irfan Patan as a bowler. Yeah. Um, hmm. 
the, I think trying to force one is, is dangerous and I think is not a good idea. No, no, no. Frankly, you wouldn't... Frank, frankly unnecessary. Um, I, get, I wouldn't Kumar force one. Ready, I mean, is there someone? That's what I mean. Nithish Kumar Reddy is as close as India have got to a... But even he, I don't think, is mm. a top four batter, really. No, no, no. You, I'm talking about someone like six, six or seven. No, six or seven. Oh, yeah, five, be, six, seven. Like, just, like a Ben Stokes yeah. type of position. It does. It will... I do wonder if it might... I'm not always a big fan of this, but it might end up being like a seniority thing, like you say, KK, about the bowlers. You kind of, you know, you're more likely to bat in the top four or five mm-hmm. if you're kind of seen as in the club rather than you are. Like it, India's thing, actually, of debuting top order batters as top order batters recently is quite rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't happen that often, um, mm-hmm. and and you end up with we uh, situations where like you know you end up with the kind of senior seniors. They tend to pick. Yeah. I think it tends to, like, I think India selectors tend to value runs made in the top four in domestic cricket, which is one of the reasons why it took Sarfraz Khan so long to mm-hmm. make it, it to the to, team. I suppose there also tends to be more churn because he was in the batting. top three because it's a harder position to bat. And so you tend to get, you it's a harder position to get found correct. out more. Yeah. Uh, there's also been a weird run of freak injuries in the top, mm-hmm. in the top three for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, look at like yeah. Mayan Gagarwal has yeah. uh, has found some very odd ways of not being in the team over the, over the last few years. He just keeps getting weird muscle injuries. Um, mm-hmm. One one guy who we know will will bat at some point in one of the first two tests. I'll be Manu Ishwaran. You know, we see his name on A team lists, and he's been mm-hmm. knocking around tours for a little while. What kind of player is he? Frankly, I've not watched much of him at all to give you a proper answer to that. I think from what I've heard, he's like a, a old school kind of, I mean, uh, he's never played in the IPL. So that should uh, that's, should tell you what kind of player he's likely to be, uh, which might, you know. The Ak- and the, the, yeah, Ak- the Ak- I, 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 or Beyond that, I really don't know. He's scored... He, I don't know. He scored quite a few first-class hundreds, like eighteen or nineteen. From I could be very wrong about this, but uh, let me actually. Well, look that's, that. that's. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of player I guess uh, India are lacking generally. Anyway. Yeah, and I think I think the selectors have uh, been twenty-seven hoping. first-class hundreds, twenty-nine first-class fifties. Uh, yeah, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. So that's a that's a really good sign, right? If. You have a guy who's made that many first class hundreds, yeah. so I think that average is yeah. high forty. I was just looking recently. An scored uh, yeah. two hundreds mm. uh, during the uh, during the Dalip Trophy, and then scored a hundred yes. in the Irani made, Cup as well. I think four if four in successive matches or something like that. So yeah, I I think he'll be pretty solid. Like he's been on so many eight tours now, so clearly. India see, yeah. you know, the tools in him. I think they've been wanting and hoping that Uttaraj Gaikwad, because he's, you know, looked the part in white ball cricket, even scored like T20 hundreds for India and stuff. I think they've been hoping that he can make the transition to red ball as well, but I don't right. think they see that yet. So, uh, Abhimanyu is the guy. This is very stylistically kind of different and a very different role to kind of. He's not a like or like Karun mm-hmm. Sharma in that sense. <laughs> is the opposite no, trajectory yeah. pretty much? Has Rohit bedded himself in the one day setup? Yeah. Though I though I suspect that whenever Rohit does get back on that tour, he is going to bat more like he was in that 2020 21 phase than. Uh, than he has suited, in uh, India uh, over the last brilliantly in, in England in 2021, didn't it? When he and when he was mm. able to to, to, yeah. eat, to eat up time, um, yeah, yeah. that could be a fantastic call for Jaisal, who um, yeah. is uh, a guy mm. who we know can attack for for very very long uh, for very very long periods of time. Mm. Um, KK, you mentioned um, yeah. India A tours for Abhimanyu Ishwaran um, and, and a, a ma- amount of kind of games and practice he's had. Uh, looking forward to mm. BGT in Australia, the, the the practice match for India has been cancelled. Um, and one of the criticism of overseas tours, mm. I, I think generally it's probably to do with uh, the, the schedules as well these days, is that the tour matches are getting less and less. And so people aren't lo- used to kind of local conditions when mm. they're bed down, especially 
what is kind of alien to, to them, shall we say? Um, hmm. But in this case, mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I'm slightly worried that that India are rocking up there, not playing any tours games, um, and not getting used to the local conditions as much. You and Knuckle obviously said to me before we started that actually there's a sound logic and a reason to why this happens. Do, do you guys want to just just explain that? Hmm. I'll, I'll start. Sorry. I mean, there's... Uh, so Australia yeah, right now in the Sheffield yeah. Shield at the moment. Yeah. So the the days of Prime Minister's 11s, like there was a... I was watching some highlights we felt on a YouTube rabbit hole of uh, a PM 11s game against a touring Indian team uh, mm. from the early 90s. Uh, and the PM 11s team... Let me look this up. Uh, the Indians 1990s. So it's, it was... Like Sachin's first tour and, and Shastri was uh was was captain and and, and things like this. Uh, and so you know, that team had Matthew Hayden in it, it had Damian Martin in it, uh it had a young Shane Warne in it. Um now, okay, it was in the it was in nineteen ninety, so it's not uh, so it's not quite the same uh as it, you know, those in fact, yeah, I've got the team up here. This is a one day game. The PM's 11 game, this is in 1991, playing against the Turing Indian teams. Greg Blewett, Matthew Hayden, Jamie Siddons, Michael Bevan, Damian Martin, Tim Zura, Alan Border, then the test captain, Greg Roll, Shane Warne, Damian Fleming, Dave Gilbert. You're not going to get a team of that strength now. So that was a proper, that was pretty much a one for Australians as well. well. No, because it was 1990, so these guys were a lot of, a, a lot of academy players. No, it's 91. So, so it was no, 91. players. But 91, 92 is when, when was Ward made series, his yeah. debut as well. So they were, yeah, so they were looking at these guys as, okay, who can make the step up? So it it was a kind of preparatory yeah, It's like, the, it's like a really, really, really strong A team, hmm. which you're just not going to yeah. get that now in the you guys middle saying... of the Sheffield Shield season. So you're not going to get the strength of opposition you want, which is what makes it a valuable exercise. You're very unlikely, and we've seen this with lots of teams touring lots of different places. You're very unlikely to get pitches that actually test the skills you're trying to test. Uh, you'll get underprepared pitches or very, very flat pitches in grounds that don't have the uh, right facilities. Um, so you're better off just getting a good practicing. So the, the the theory being, the theory goes that you're more likely to get good practice through either a very intense intra-squad game, which actually India, in, curiously, India have decided not to even have an intra-squad game, uh, mm-hmm. like in India versus India A game, uh, and have just gone to centre wicket practice, so to go even more into kind of controlled conditions where they can have the kind of bowlers they want. So presumably they'll get a load of really tall, fast bowlers uh, and an off spinner uh, in, to, mm-hmm. in to have have bowl at them. Um isn't that how Nathan he, Lyon kind of started his career? He was just a net bowler and son of. Somebody. Well, I mean, he was. A, he played a decent amount of. He, his story is quite complicated, but he had a. He, he was on yeah, the ground, the ground staff as well. Right? He, in Canberra. He, he yeah, in Canberra, because yeah. mm. Cambridge is not quite big enough to support that level of quality cricket. He got the opportunity to move to South Australia, play South Australia club cricket, and the one of the management staff in the. In the Australia team knew of Nathan Lyon and, and called him up, and that's how he that was kind of on. He, he was kind of already on the journey to playing for South Australia at the time, but yeah, right. and that happens, you know. And you know, there are legions of all there are loads and loads of stories of how many of them are actually true. Of you know, in Pakistan, of you know, Imran Khan spotting someone in the nets and saying, You're playing tomorrow, uh, th- this type of thing. Oh, um, yeah, they, they took they took a duffer from, from that film, and now he's bowling spin, so um. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> India of India of now going to just behind closed doors practice rather than oh. even an an, an intra squad game. Um, we saw. Uh, I'm slightly I'm slightly disappointed by that. I think the the playing really intense cricket against your A team can be a can be a good thing. Sometimes mm-hmm. we've seen it work for Australia on successive tours of England. Uh, there's always a slight worry of injury. Like India did lose a couple of players to injury in. Uh, in, in warm-up games um, 2018. before when they last toured England. But um, I suppose that can, I suppose you can just as easily get a broken thumb in the nets or, or whatever. Um, but I think it's, I think a little bit too much is made of the, um, 
of the lack of uh, kind of first class cricket in preparation for tours because the kind of first class cricket you're getting it just is not the kind of first class cricket you were going to get of a tour even in the nineties. Right, and then I guess what you're saying really is because the pitches are so yeah. different, you're not used to the conditions. It doesn't matter about the conditions. I think I suppose Australia is different to say England or New Zealand, um, probably more so England, where actually you need to get to grips with the way it swings differently or the, the cloud cover, whereas Australia, it's, it's, it's generally hot, fast and bouncy. Australian pitches are more similar. A little but bit sure, less, but but to, <laughs> are more similar to each other than they, than yeah. say, in some other pitches, so it probably matters a little bit. That's what I'm saying. You know, it, 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 look, uh, an India versus India A game where they let the public in and you'd have it stream would have been fun. Mm. I can completely see, though, why they have decided not to. Yeah. Less the Marsha, more, less pressure for um for, for the for the players really to get to that kind of mm. peace and quiet beforehand. Um, guys, talking of Australia, yeah. um, it's it's not it's not looking good as um I think uh, there's two schools I guess uh, the copium is that uh, New Zealand had Sri Lanka beforehand got that out of their system and India have now hopefully got this um, out of their system against New Zealand. That's the real kind of hope. Um, or the other thing is that basically, like it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a slaughter down to, uh, down under. Um, which of those two camps? Or are, are you just uh, using, well, logic and reason and straddling both and say actually, we could win a game, but it's, it's it, Australia probably favourites, especially they don't particularly want to be losing a third series at home to India. Take it, you want to take the question? Yeah, I think. Uh... Yeah, uh, I think even before New Zealand happened, this was always going to be a really difficult Australia tour. I mean, I look at the fast bowling and you have Akash Deep who's never been to Australia. You have Siraj who is looking like, you know, uh, not in the rhythm he was when he last went to Australia and uh, oppositions know a lot more about him as well. His speeds are a little down too. And then you have Bumrah, whom you're hoping can play all five test unlikely. matches. And two other Yeah, and two others in the squad who've played like Prasad Krishna has played on that South Africa tour. Just one yeah, his, test, his name. I think. When I hear his name, it concerns and me. And you have another you have Harshit Rana who hasn't even played that much first class cricket. So those two guys are there because they are tall, they can hit the deck, and you know, they have they like the uh, release height, but you still need a level of control, just to, uh, even if you're tall. Pr- pr- yeah, you do, you do. So, Krishna's so we don't know if they have really, that. Really I mean, impressive, been... including on India A tours and playing above Ranji Trophy level. It is. I've yeah. seen Krishna bowl in. Yeah, I remember mean, he was yeah. on the England tour a few years ago, and I, mm. I think Prashid Krishna could be a really, really useful asset for India if he's bowling well because he gets. Awkward mm. bounce from a from a height. I, you can get the yeah. ball to move both ways. He's quicker than you think he is. I think he can be a real handful. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm excited to see. He unfortunately got injured uh, not that long after that tour, and so wasn't mm. able to, and so sort of kind of lost yeah. a little bit of time. But I think Prashid Krishna um, could be a guy who does really well uh, in in Australia. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I think he's got the tools and I think he's got the first class record as well. And I think it will at some point translate into like success at the test level. But whether that happens now is like, you don't know that yet. So there's a lot of question marks around the fast bowling. So my feeling is that if like Australian conditions tend to be like hot and like there's bounce, right? Now the variable is that is there are two variables. One is how much bounce there is, it, uh, and when it really gets like you know Perth or like Gaba in historically that level of bounce uh, versus like a regular Australian thing where it comes on nicely to the bat, like there's something for everyone. And the other variable is like how much grass you leave on the pitch and like. Uh, and in Adelaide, there's the pink ball and like there's, uh, you know, uh, the twilight period and how the ball behaves then. So my feeling is if 
if conditions allow india to play a second spinner where they are expecting okay in the third and fourth inning spin is actually going to like come into the game or even in the first innings like it did in melbourne last time where ashwin you know got three wickets i think on day one so if conditions are of the kind where india are like look i think we can play two spinners here i think that evens up the contest considerably but i have a feeling india are going to, uh, australia are going to like try and make it as fast bowling friendly as we, possible we had shami then yes this time which, yeah. which they didn't do last time yeah uh, which if they do that this time i think that really like amps up australia's yeah. home advantage so based on that if if it's going to be 4-1 like four fast bowlers one spinner type conditions i think india are at like quite a disadvantage right. much more than they would have been in the la- on the last two tours with their at least with yeah, their first 11 the, the kind of what happened the team ended, ended up playing and winning with at the gaba makes very makes sort of historical precedent and not anybody's friend uh, here really because oh. um oh. you know no one would have expected any of those guys to do uh, to do much towards the end, uh, in a crunch yeah. situation i mean australia's top order is not as strong as it could have been they don't really know who their second opener is going to be steve smith hasn't been himself recently i mean he'll move back down into the into the middle order marcus labashain has been uh, short on hundreds by his standards you know no one in india only remind me what travis head is capable of um the you know the middle order is um it, it is very very strong you know alex carey has been scoring has been scoring runs again they will miss cameron green i think in the in the middle order um and the ability to bowl a few extra a few extra overs that said mitch marsh is in some of the best batting form he's been in for a while and you know their attack is superb as we know and has got guys backing it up like abbot and and nisa and uh and boland um the the psychological kind of bounce back is is the important thing really for if it india because i'm not really sure that we know from a purely sort of skills and team matchup point of view much more than we did before this series um it it's whether you know australia will be a little bit angry having lost to india twice at home india should be angry having just lost at home and angry teams can produce some really really good cricket um so i think kind of who i think the the key is kind of and unfortunately who's, this is difficult to find the out but yeah who's able to channel that wounded pride better i think will be will be a significant factor in this series um in terms of what we can say from the, from this point on yeah um and india need to kind of prove that if they actually run the icc they should be winning all these series all the time but they yeah they don't seem to be running it properly basically which doesn't reflect well on indian management of the game what's the point of running what's the point of being accused of running everything and still not winning is what i say uh, <laughs> shall we i think i think it's i think i think it's the sort of uh, is the front they present look we're not winning everything how can we be running everything like you accuse us of doing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i'm smart yeah yeah and we're not winning i think and this, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. this is actually time. corporate responsibility really... corporate, corporate social responsibility in action yeah like when a cartel builds a hospital <laughs> that's pretty that's a that's that's a, an interesting analogy i'll say a good one <laughs> the bcci hospital in perth um chin music right anyway uh i think we should probably leave it there we'll delve in to the australia series a bit more and the selections uh, a bit more next time round um i guess we'll probably have to talk about the ipl as well um we kind of touched on retentions briefly um but my team punjab um have basically torn up everything i just want, want to say something so mark machado <coughs> from murli and also our, our kind of uh, should we say executive producer he asked me at the end of the last ipl who are you keeping and i said or no honestly i'm giving what rabada i should keep i remember saying i can't remember i said a couple of others basically big players and and he said why and i said look i think fundamentally there's something just 
inept or rotten uh, in the management. Um, I just don't think there's 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 something going on at boardroom level uh, at uh, Punjab, even though they changed the name from Kings Eleven to Pubkis. Um, like there, there's just something that just doesn't seem to work, and maybe it's because you've got two fiancés, ex fiancés running the board or whatever. It, they just seem to be like not doing much. So th that will be interesting, especially Ponting's there, and I'll talk about winning which is, is kind of not something that Punjab has been doing. Um, but obviously, punt has been let go by Delhi. So there's a lot to talk about in the IPL. And as we know, unfortunately, India has saved Test cricket, so we can't talk about the IPL this episode. But um, we'll have to save that for the future. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, KK, thank you for uh, your, your debut here. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Uh, Knuckle, good to have you back. Retention squad. Um, and you've got a nice, cool gobby with a star as well. Um, so from three dudes with beards and uh, glasses, <laughs> check us out on socials, Gumble Corner. Just go search for it, 2Ks Gumble Corner. Um, and like and subscribe wherever you can. Follow us wherever and tell all your friends about this amazing Indian cricket podcast called the Gumble Corner. Because if you don't tell people about cricket and about the greatness of the game, then you're not a friend to anyone. Not least yourself. Bye for now.